So today is going to be a project. I'd like to walk you through making a project from start to finish. Last month, if you joined us for the webinar, it was kind of an a overview of what everything um, the Craft and Cut software could do. So today is going to be a um, project. So I'm just going to start with a PowerPoint show. Um, to show this to you, and we will have this available to you. Um, this will be on my website, hopeyoder.com, in a few days, so that you can look at this and get this um, the directions free. So let's get started. Here is the project that we're going to make from start to finish. Uh, vinyl planter, two ways. So we have in the picture a layered vinyl butterfly with multiple colors of vinyl that all line up perfectly on the left and on the right we use the same artwork and we created one color of vinyl. Now I'll tell you when I bought my uh, digital cutter I bought it so I could do machine applique and that's really all I wanted to do with it but as I started using my cutters what I realized is I really am addicted to vinyl. I should rename this addicted to vinyl but here we go here's one color of vinyl. Now if you're looking at this um, give a shout out to my husband Marv Yoder who took these beautiful photos for me and uh, to Chris who created the designs and applied them while I was gone. This is a little tin can from Ikea, just a little dollar can that we put some pretty roses um, in. Here's the second picture close up showing again the multiple color of layered vinyl. And so the material list, things that you'll need, obviously number one would be the craft and cut software. I love the software program. I don't have to go in any other program anymore to create what I want. I can do it all inside of uh, the Craft and Cut. We're going to use Embroidery Perfection Tape, and that came in your Craft and Cut box. It's the pretty pink tape. You're going to need a metal planter can. Mine came from Ikea. Uh, we used five different colors of permanent vinyl, and you can see that on the screen, and vinyl uh, transfer tape, and I listed the brand that I like. Now our objectives are using the Save to Cut tool and number one objective is learning to use that layered vinyl with registration marks and then we're going to cut and apply the sticker decal. So on this screen, here's just some directions and I won't go over these because I want to do them um, live in the Craft and Cut software. But sometimes when you have artwork, we're going to use existing artwork inside of the program. And if you look at the butterfly, there's some little outlines around his yellow body that we don't need. There's a faint pink outline around the wings. And if you look at the wing on the left, it has a shadow um, inner area of teal outlining the green mist wing. But on the right side, Somehow that line isn't there, so we're going to add it in. So sometimes artwork needs a little bit of manipulation or editing depending on what you want to do with it. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. Also at this picture, if you'll look at the top, the antennas are really skinny and tiny. And so it's not going to cut very well, it's not going to weed very well, and it would end up just being a slice in the vinyl. So the bottom right picture, we manipulated the original artwork to make it chunkier in one piece and welded it together. We're going to go on and create um, and the different layers, and then we're going to add text. And then I'm going to show you how to move the text closer together. If you look at the hello, the O came in really far away from the L. And I think the E needs to go closer to the H. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. A lot of directions. Again, we'll post these for you. So if you want to try to make your own um, watering cans or little um, flower planters, you'll have these. Here's what um, Chris was doing in our studio. So she was using the Scan and Cut 2 for this project. And notice she put all of her layered vinyl pieces down on the mat at one time and was able to scan it and cut it out. And it wouldn't matter what cutter you use because the crafting cut is works with any brand of digital cutter on the market today. So some of you may have more than one cutter in your studio. 
Once she cut and weeded the first layer, it looks like this. Now the pink embroidery perfection tape, I always tape it to my cutting mat when I'm going to layer things together. And the reason is the paper tends to curl up and then sometimes I can't match up the squares. So if you've never seen the layered vinyl with registration mark function in the craft and cut, I thought it would be helpful to show you why you want registration marks. Some of you are embroiderers out there, probably a lot of you are, and I've been embroidering for, well, since the very first home embroidery machine came out, and I remember one company came out first with uh, registration marks for a hoop that would be uh, endless and you could keep doing uh, embroidery after embroidery and make them all line up, and it created the letter Z. And when you embroidered your second uh, repeat, you had to match up the needle with the last point in the Z. And so we've kind of used that theory to make these registration marks. So as I apply my uh, different layers of vinyl, all I have to worry about is matching up those little squares. So here's the second picture. You can see we've weeded and we've used transfer tape. It's really hard to see in the picture. But if you look at the bottom of the picture, uh, you can kind of see the clear transfer tape below the pink tape. So we have applied and matched up the squares from the purple vinyl to the pink vinyl. And now, excuse me, and now we've added the blue layer. And here we've added the dark pink or dark purple layer. And so all we're doing is we're matching up the registration squares. And I'm going to show you a video inside of the Save to Cut in a minute so you can see that in action. Then we would go ahead and add the Hello. And we've got one unit. At this point we would pick off and remove, discard the little squares. And then we are going to apply it to our can and there you see um, how cute that looks. I'm also going to show you how to take that same butterfly and get one color of vinyl. For one color of vinyl, you don't need registration marks, but we're going to use some different tools in the software. So with this design, we're going to use the same body that we've made the antennas a little chunkier and welded the body together, and we're going to kind of cut out the butterfly wings to have this open cutwork effect. Now I wanted to show you before we go into the software some other things, some fun things that I've done with some of my um, embroidery designs. This is one of my favorite embroidery collections and it's called Sew so Chandelier. And it includes about 26 machine embroidery designs, but it also includes the original vector SVG artwork. And so if you look at the back cover of the embroidery collection, we have all the little sewing motifs, the dress form, the scissors, um, and there's a little love to sew. And we've cut that out of vinyl, layered vinyl, and put it on an acrylic tumbler. And then we use the little heart underneath the uh, two and kind of manipulated it and made polka dot hearts. So that's something really fun. Now, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, will this vinyl go through um, the dishwasher or do I need to hand wash it? Well, we're using a permanent vinyl, and in this sample it's Oracal 651, and permanent, it's the same type of vinyl you see on the back of cars with the little stick friends. And um, I'll tell you, you should hand wash it, but if you've met me, you might have met my family, and I've got a 17 and a 19-year-old daughter, and when I'm away from home, they don't hand wash anything. So these end up in the dishwasher, and um, the vinyl almost always outlasts the cup. Here's another really fun project. I was going out to teach a cutting retreat a couple years ago, and um, I created little vinyl decals from this So Chandelier, and I came into my manicurist and I did a gel manicure and I had the little silver um, pieces with transfer tape on them and right before they applied the clear coat, they applied um, the, the vinyl. This was a lot of fun. I got a lot of attention with my nails. The downside of this is it took me about two hours to do this manicure. But isn't this cool? If you have a teenager in your life, this would be a fun way to use the project. All right, so that's the end of the slideshow.
let's go into Craft and Cut. So Craft and Cut software. If you haven't used the software very much, we have a brand new landing page since the last webinar. And by the way, I've only done one webinar um, in the past. And if you missed it, guess what? You can still watch it. And you would click here. And this would take you to the last webinar. And you can play this at any time. If you want to see how to apply layered vinyl, you're going to click on the application videos. And here's a video uh, called Layered Vinyl that I created. It's also in the same paper account. and stick to my transfer tape. <laughs> we'll turn that off just to show you that those are there. And if you want some more lessons on software, making sure that all the vinyl process. does really stick to my tape. Immediately, I'm going to cover. Sorry about that. Let's go back to the Craft and Cut. And so if you want to see some software tutorials, you'll click here. If you need help or support, you're going to click on the support ticket and fill out information about the software, and they'll answer that. So let's close this page. I just wanted to show you that because when I open the software, usually I'm in a hurry, and I close this page without even looking to see what's there. So let's go ahead and get started with our layered vinyl butterfly. We're going to click New Page. And when you click New Page, you have this matte preview. I like to work without the matte preview, so I'm going to hide it by simply clicking on it. We're going to use a built-in design that everybody has in their craft and cut. So I want you to know this is not um, something that you have to go out and purchase. It's right inside your program. So we're going to open up the artwork library. And in your drop-down menu, I'm going to go to insects. And I've selected the very first butterfly. If you want to zoom in, the quickest way is to double-click on your magnifying glass. Let's look over on the right side in the Layers window. If you're used to an embroidery program, this would be your Properties window. But in a graphic, uh, programs such as Craft and Cut layers. So think out of it as the layers of vinyl that you would lay on your mat. We need to simplify this. If I was to zoom in here, this outer edge, I don't really need that outer edge, so I want to delete it. There's also some other artwork that I don't need for my vinyl. For instance, this outline of the body. So let's come over and start deleting some of the parts that I know I don't need. So in my Layers window, I'm going to delete the outline of the wing and the head. And here's one more outline that I don't need. Make sure you leave that very last layer. So I'm going to right-click and then left-click on Delete. Oops, looks like I missed a few. There we go. The next thing that I'm going to do is notice, let's zoom in here. For some reason, this artwork is kind of missing this section of the wing. It's on the left, but it's not on the right. That's an easy fix. So I'm going to select it, right click, and I'm going to copy, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to paste it. And now I'm going to uh, flip it. And then I'll just drag it over to the other wing. So now I've got matching wings. Perfect. And to close all of these little windows, I can right click and collapse all. Now there are some things that we also need to deal with. This butterfly looks pretty good right now. It looks like I could cut the wings and the body and it would be OK. But I know from experience, the antennas are way too thin. I also know that this is not welded. While it looks like it is because I have filled color, if I was going to select all items and deselect fill so I can just get the line images, look what happens here. This body is not welded. That means 
that when I cut this out, it would cut this little notch out of my circle. And that would not be what I wanted. So what I'm going to do, oops, is I now want to weld the body together. So in my layers window, I'm going to select the body and the head. To weld something, you need it to overlap. And it's already overlapping. So all I need to do is come to this toolbar area, scroll over, and find weld. So let me zoom in so you can see how awesome in the weld tool is. So I'm going to select the body and the head. And I want you to watch right here when I select weld. Beautiful. So now I've got one color. If I was going to fill that in, I've got one piece of vinyl, no notch there, so that's great. The next thing I want to deal with is the wings, or the, not the wings, the antenna. So let's zoom in. So I have this antenna, and let's it open up, click on the plus, and I am going to weld together each antenna with its little circle. So I've selected the antenna and the circle on top, and I've welded it. And notice how this doesn't look very nice. We're going to keep it there for now. I'm going to do the same to the other antenna. And I'm going to weld that together. And we'll fill it in for you. Now, to make the butterfly antenna look a little bit better, let's use the shape tool. Have you guys ever used the shape tool before? Here it is. And here are my points. So I can add some points so that I can drag it in. Right here, I'm missing a couple points. So I'm going to hover my mouse and right click and then add a point. And you can add as many of those as you want. Once I have a couple more points in here, I can go ahead and shape my antenna so it looks a little nicer. Looks pretty good. So let's select the second antenna, select shape, let's see what happens if I just add one point. Not too bad, that looks better. All right, let's zoom out. Now I want to weld the antennas to the body so that when I cut out the butterfly, the body is one piece, not several pieces. So to do this, I need for my antennas to overlap into the body. So let's just drag these down a little bit. And I'm going to select the antennas and select my body, weld it together. Notice it didn't quite weld in this area. And so all I need to do is to select undo. And I'm going to move my antennas down a little lower. Now let's try that again. And still didn't get it to go where I want it. So one more time. Let's go way down in there and see what happens. This is what I love about the program. Perfect. That looks good. So see by lowering the antennas a little bit, then I got the weld to work right. So what's great about this is don't be afraid to click buttons. You can hit undo. Just get it to where you like it. So now I have the body taken care of. And if I unfill it, you can see that it's one shape or one piece of vinyl. So I like that. Let's go back and work with our wings. And I'm going to fill everything back in. And then I'll come down here. And now what we want to do is we want to combine layers together. So if you were to look in the layer window, you can see I have, we're gonna, I'm going to call these the colors princess. So I have two layers that are princess layers. And they're the light lavender. So I want to combine them so that it's one layer. I wouldn't want to cut two wings at two different times. I would want to lay one piece of vinyl on my mat and cut it as one. So I'm going to select the two princesses, 
select on the combine and notice how it combined it into one layer. So I'm trying to clean up and get the least amount of layers in this window. Let's select both of the Venice blue and combine. And this one is already combined. Notice it's hidden behind. So I can right click and move up. And now you see that again. So I have my butterfly pretty much how I want it. I need to add some text. And I'll do that in a minute. But before I do that, let me show you the magic of using the layered vinyl registration marks. So before I do that, I'm going to copy this whole butterfly and put it into a new screen. And that's a good thing to do just in case something goes wrong and doesn't go the way I want it to. I have that butterfly that I can refer back to. So now my object is to get little layered registration marks along um, in here automatically. And I'll tell you, in any other program that I've worked in, I had to manually go in and add little squares. And then I had to copy and paste and group and ungroup and copy, paste, group, ungroup, all kinds of tedious labor to create these registration marks. And the Craft and Cut is the only, I repeat, only software program that does automated layered registration marks for vinyl. That's pretty awesome. So before I do that, let me show you in the Save to Cut the layered vinyl video. And I'll just show you a few moments of this. And then I'll show you how to get there again. To lift off of the paper and stick to my transfer tape. <laughs> I'm going to slowly and carefully remove this, making sure that all the vinyl does really stick to my tape. Immediately, I'm going to cover up and get rid of this tape. And we'll use it on our final piece. Now, to make this work, let me put this under here so you can see it better. To make this work, the registration squares were the only thing that I have to line up. That means if I had 50 colors of vinyl, of course, I exaggerate a little bit, but what if I had five colors of vinyl? You'd do the same thing. You'd always start with the foreground and work your way backwards. So I'm going to cover the waxy side. Make sure you get that waxy side uh, stuck to the vinyl. I'm going to cover everything up except for my little registration marks. I have my white piece of vinyl left, so let me tape it to the table. Again, see how it curls? Really makes it difficult to match up the squares if it's not completely flat. This is all covered up so it won't accidentally stick to the white before I'm ready. And all I'm doing is my eyes are looking right at the squares. Got one chance to line it up pretty good. Now the magic, you're going to roll this off. We don't need this anymore. And you're going to slow and steadily lay down your transfer tape. Look at that. I did it. I love when it all comes together. When a good plan turns out good. Let me fast forward this a little bit so you can see my little pick. And I'm going to remove them and they become garbage. Don't need them anymore. And why stop at one layer now that you know how to do multiple layers? So let's put our design down. And I think I'll put the heart. Ah, what do you think? This way or this way? I'm going to do it cockeyed. And so what I'm going to do is just center it. Again, I have one chance to get this in the place that I want it. That's another trick of why I would do it off center because it's not matchy-matching, and if you don't nail it and get it in the center the first time, you probably aren't going to notice that as much. So one shot to get it down. 
once I get it where I want it, I've got the tape that's holding all three layers of vinyl together. Scrape the vinyl down slowly and carefully lift off your transfer tape making sure that all the layers of the vinyl stay on to my little tin. Alright, so I think that kind of shows you how important the registration squares are so that when we're layering these four colors of vinyl, what we want to do is only have to worry about matching up the squares and not centering all the shapes. So let me show you the magic in Craft and Cut of using the layered vinyl registration marks. This is one of the things when we were brainstorming about the program, what would really make it awesome? And because I personally cut more vinyl than anything, I really wanted a program where I could just have a one-click wonder, click a button, and the magic would happen. It would create the registration marks for me automatically. So are you ready? Let's do this. Here is the layered registration vinyl marks. You're going to click on it. Notice I have all four uh, colors of my vinyl selected. You have a lot of options in here. I usually just leave this at the default. I like my registration marks to the left. 0.5 millimeters is great, but you have options if you want them. Click OK, and here is what happened. I don't know if you can see it yet. Can you see it? I have bounding boxes around each piece, and I have these registration marks. Let me show you um, what actually has happened here. So before we go to cut this, I'm going to select the yellow body. Whoops. Yellow body. Now I'm going to select the yellow squares, which are hidden underneath the blue ones. And then I'm going to find the yellow bounding box. And I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to move it off so you can see what's underneath. Notice how the registration squares were hidden, and they line up perfectly on top of each other. So here's my undo button. Now, what I'd like to do is I'm going to create four cut files for this butterfly. And so I would select all of the yellow, like I've done. I'm going to click on the Cut Preview window, and this will take artwork to a new screen. I'm going to remove my mat and zoom in, and this brings it in automatically filled. So you can see the body, the squares, and the bounding box. I almost always just unfill that bounding box so you can see this is what my piece should look like after I've cut and weeded it. When I'm done with this, I'm going to run it through Save to Cut. If you haven't used Save to Cut yet, it is awesome. This was something that I know DJ talked about. He'd love to have this in here. And as we started talking about Save to Cut, our, here were our thoughts. Well, my, or I guess I should say my observations. If you don't know, if you haven't met me, I travel all the country and I do webinars. Um, I do hands-on sip and sew tea parties and cutting edge socials in stores and cutting edge retreats. And I'm always showing digital cutting at all of those events, some of them more than others. And one of the things that I find no matter what part of the country I'm in is digital cutting kind of scares people because they have bought their cutter and they bought all the materials because they were at an event and it looked like a great fun option and then it sits in a box for a year. They don't know what to do with it or where to start. And so what we thought would be great is to take the mystery of digital cutting out of, uh, out of the clay and have saved a cut with a little recipe or a formula. It's like having me or a, a digital cutting teacher sitting right next to you. So let me show you this. So here's Save to Cut. Right away, I'm going to tell it what brand of digital cutter I'm using today. So we'll leave it at Brother Scan and Cut. The type of material or fabric. I'm working with vinyl, so I'm going to find vinyl. Right away, it starts to tell me the Save to Cut tells me, hey, Hope, you need a 12 by 12 mat. Awesome, that's what came in the box. I've got it. I'm going to click on Next. Now it's going to tell me 
to use my standard blade. It's going to give me a recommendation to set that blade at 2.75. The speed in my tools menu on my scan and cut is going to be 3. The blade pressure 1, I'm going to cut it one time. Now, here's what's really important. Um, you may not know, maybe you have vinyl in your stash and you've never used it. Well, we put a video to show you start to finish how to use it. There are always application instructions. For instance, vinyl comes with paper on the back. People tell me all the time, do I put it face down, face up, do I peel the paper off? So all you have to do is read right here, paper side down and kiss cut. That means you do not cut through the release paper. Leave the release paper on the back and place paper side down. And then there's some special instructions. You have video for vinyl and layered vinyl, which is what I just showed you. You're going to go to next, and it has some important directions. Everybody says, but I don't know what my scan and cut reads. What do I save it to? Like an embroidery, you know that a brother machine would be PES. Well, because you selected that your brand of digital cutter, it automatically knows what format to save it in, so you don't even have to worry about that. Isn't that awesome? So once I hit save, I have this little recipe card or a template that will pop up, and it has all of those settings right here. So you can take it um, to your cutter. It's also great because it gives you a visual of what your piece should look like once you've cut and weeded the vinyl away. I think this is awesome. So we can close this out. We've done our yellow. Let's go back to the design. And now we're going to do the same thing to the princess color. We're going to select everything that says princess, which would be the design itself, the registration squares, the bounding box, run it through cut preview, run it through, oops, let me show you this again. We'll unfill this. We'll run this through Save to Cut again with Vinyl. And I'll go Next, Next, Next. And I would name it something and save it, print it, close it. I'm going to go back to my design. Now I'll grab, uh, select my green mist design, the green mist registration marks, and the green mist bounding box. Send it to Cut Preview unfill this. You don't have to unfill it. It's just a visual. And then we're going to go through Save to Cut again. Run it through here. Name it. Save it. Print it. And then you do the same thing to the last piece. Um, also, when you're at this stage, you're going to want to save this as a WAF file. And you're going to save that as a WAF file in case you cut it out and it's too little or too big. This is your edit, editable working file, so you'll save that as well. Now, I haven't shown you the text, so let me zoom out. Let's go to 50%. And I'm going to select the text tool and then left-click in this area. I've chosen this font. And we'll just type in hello. I'm going to color this a different color so you can see it. And I'm going to drag it off so I can get it about the right size. All right. Now if I click back on the text tool, let's zoom in here. Notice how the O is spaced a little too far away. So I can uh, just left click on the orange square and move it over. And then I can move that H over. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks so much better. I like it. And I can send this through Cut Preview and the Save to Cut. And I have my... Uh, solid color. So that's how we created the layered vinyl with registration marks. What do you think? Pretty easy, right? Well, the good news is this webinar is going to be recorded 
so you can watch it and pause it and go through the steps with me. So let's do a solid butterfly. Remember when I pasted this into a new screen? Here's my butterfly. And so if I wanted to do solid, I'm going to combine all, um, I'm going to hide the body first. So by hiding a layer, you just click on the eye. The eye hides or um, shows up. So we don't want to see the body. I'm just going to be working with the wings right now. Let's select all of these wings. Actually, let me go back here and I'm going to unfill this. Ah, now let's work and fill. So select all of the wing layers like I've done. And then we're going to combine them with a paper clip. Now what happens if you unfill this is you have this great cut work. So I went here to here. One thing I want to point out is when I hit combine, it looks like it didn't do anything but created a perimeter or a border. So just remember to always um, look at it filled and unfilled. Sometimes unfilled gives you a more accurate representation. Now all I have to do is turn back on my body. To make it one color, I can click on all items. There's my um, design. I can come back here and just select this hello and I'm going to copy it and paste it back in to this design and I can click on all things again and there we go. Now one thing I don't think I told you and it's in the directions is to make it size proportionate for our can it's about 121 millimeters. So you, with everything selected, go to 121 millimeters. And so right there, I've cl uh, created this solid filled butterfly. So with this, I'm going to run it through Save to Cut. I'm going to select Vinyl. And again, right here, it's going to tell me 12 by 12 mat. It's going to give me all of my settings. And here's a video. And we'll fast forward this a little bit. In these videos, I the talk about the materials the part I'm using. that I don't want to use. You'll want a trash can handy. I'm, I may have a little holiday, a little hiccup, a little, oh, no. And so sometimes, on applying this to the paper. So if we come down, um, I wanted to make sure I cut it, which I did, bigger than my paper, and I want to bend it like this so that the middle will touch my paper first. And I'm going to touch the middle first and let it smooth out. Now, if you can see on the camera, I didn't get the tape straight. None of that matters. What matters is you had one shot, or I had one shot, to get the vinyl on the paper, and I did a good job of that, so I'm good to go. Now, transfer tape, remember the objective is to transfer all these letters and all my red vinyl to the tape so that it'll lift off of the paper as one unit, keeping everything in line. So I'm going to scrape this down. Just like taking the vinyl off the mat, a lot of times, you'll start to remove it like this, meaning taking the tape off of your paper. What I found that works even better is the same thing we did with the mat, where I'm going to turn this upside down. The mat that you cut on was sticky. The tape is sticky. So you do the same thing. You would remove the release paper off of the vinyl and off of the transfer tape. If part of it this doesn't want to lift off, then I can turn it upside down and scrape it a little more. So be sure you watch the videos that we filmed for the Save to Cut. 
If you're like me and you've searched for a lot of YouTube videos and only been disturbed to find you wasted a whole day and all the videos weren't necessarily accurate, that's why we decided to put the application videos right inside of the Save to Cut so you don't have to go outside of the program to find somebody showing you what the heck is transfer tape. It's all right here. Don't forget to name it and save it. Oops. We'll save over that. And then you've got your recipe card to print with all of the settings for your digital cutter. And then you're good to go. So here we've got solid vinyl. And then we also have our layered vinyl with the registration marks. I sure wish I could talk to each and every one of you to see what you think of the layered registration marks. I know I'm biased because I love it and I think you're going to love it too once you start using it. Um, the trick is to get every layer of vinyl to line up perfectly and a lot of times in the past I would cut several butterflies knowing that the first two I may have got crooked but with the layered registration marks it's almost flawless especially if you tape your paper to the table like you saw me and then you just try to match up the squares. It's pretty awesome. Let me go back since we have a couple minutes left to show you the pictures on the PowerPoint again. So now if I start up here, how to do vinyl, my fingernail or my manicure was one color of vinyl and the transfer tape that you just saw me using, I went with the little designs weeded on the paper and I put transfer tape over it and I cut them out so I had little tiny squares in a Ziploc bag. And when I went to my manicurist, they knew what to do with them. In fact, you know what? Let me give you a tip. My manicurist asked me if I wanted to sell these to her so she could use them with other clients. Now I'm just too busy and I wasn't interested in that. But maybe you might be interested in that. This might be a great way to start a little hobby business to support your habit and support your local dealer when you go back in and buy more products.